What is good? We're back. We got a little buy, sell, hold, trade targets, moves to make. However you want to, however you want to phrase it. We're gonna hit you with a list of some guys. We're gonna talk about them a little bit. Give you some trade examples from the Dynasty Daddy. To go, make sure you go check that website out. Got a good uh, trade finder over there and all sorts of great stuff. Uh, but uh, we got Saquon Barkley. We got Joe Mixon. We got DK Metcalf. Mark Andrews and might finish up with a little Jamison Williams since he's getting a little buzz. Things are things are happening for old JMO over there. <laughs> uh, people, are, the, the haters are going to be pissed. All right, let's do a little buy, sell, hold for your pleasure. Let's start off with Saquon Barkley. Little Saquon, little new phone. Who dis? All right. Yeah, that doesn't look right. The Eagles. So obviously, you know, if you're watching the Hard Knocks, it's pretty good Hard Knocks. Saquon moving on to the Eagles. Uh, right in division 27 years old we've had a little bit of injuries some people are a little concerned about Jalen Hurts taking up some of the touchdown upside I think for my argument there would be like why why are you bringing in and spending a bunch of money on your running back if you're going to just continue to just run a ton of your franchise quarterback that you're spending a ton of money on I would think this would be to help alleviate that problem a little bit and you're effective at it you lost your center so we'll see how much he had to you know, put into that one of the Kelsey's, obviously, I, I would find it hard to believe that the rate that they ran that play, at least red zone wise uh, and end zone wise, wouldn't decrease some with Saquon Barkley. And I believe Swift had more red zone carries than Saquon Barkley did anyway last year. So I uh, just didn't convert on a lot of them. And Saquon can Saquon's one of the only players that I believe can give you C- CMC type production. And this offense is the best offense he's ever had. The Giants offense has been dog shit essentially since he's been there. The Eagles have been a good organization. Uh, They bring in Kellen Moore. Saquon can do a lot of the same things that CMC can do. I'm not saying he's on CMC's level, but when you start getting into that conversation of running backs who can be big game changers and do a whole lot of things and don't lose much when you switch from the running game to the passing game, Saquon Barkley is one of those guys. Austin, are you, are you buying, selling, or holding 27-year-old Saquon Barkley? I'd be buying Saquon Barkley. I feel really good about it, too. I think Saquon is a player who, you know, of course we've seen the incredibly high, immense production from him. Who's to say that, you know, he has no gas left in the tank. I, I, I do not understand that narrative. I don't think a lot of people are necessar- necessarily pushing it either. Uh, I have Saquon as the RB7 in my dynasty rankings. He's just 27 years old, man. He's still got, I think, multiple seasons of, of top tier. I'm talking tier one, mm. you know, fantasy production. I, I'm buying, man. I would pay, and I'll give you a little price too, Casey. I would be willing to pay a mid first and and a mid second to acquire Saquon Barkley. Mm. If I could, if I could buy him for under two firsts, like again, I don't mind spending that mid or even early second on top of a mid first. I would do it, man. Especially if I have a, if I am a win now, like true contender. Go ring chase, man. Go get Saquon Barkley. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have they've never had a running back as good as Saquon Barkley under the Jalen Hurts era. Yeah. I, I just I f- it feels like it's wheels up for Saquon Barkley in 2024. And honestly, even a few years past that as well. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. There were a few years there where we lost some of our, you know, big time stalwart game changing running backs there well before that age. And I feel like we're going to run into a situation here coming up that that age curve and the curve that all the historical data tends trends towards. I think we're going to see that change a little bit over the next few years. It just doesn't make any sense that it wouldn't at least a little bit and move the goalpost a year or two uh, back, especially with the upper echelon elite type guys like Saquon Barkley can be just needs to be healthy and just be productive into 30 31 rather than people being 27 28 and being hey we're we're out on this it just seems to make some sense and and you know Gurley and and David Johnson and Le'Veon all all be in those some of those guys that really burned a lot of people and hurt a lot of people and affected some of that bell curve of of you know how those elite running backs end up aging I think we're going to see guys like CMC Saquon Jonathan Taylor 
Brees Hall, Bijan. I think all those guys are going to stretch long, healthy, good careers, dual threat careers long until uh, that age curve shifts a little bit. So you said what you would pay. I got a couple of real life examples here. Saquon Barkley and the 2-6 or HN and the 210. Uh, Saquon Barkley side. That's two quarterback half PPR. How about Sharbs and Kenny Walker for Saquon Barkley and Shakir? So the two for one on Seattle or Saquon Barkley? I have Saquon one tier above uh, Ken Walker in my rankings. I have, I have Ken Walker RB9. Saquon is RB7 for me. Charbs is not enough to uh, to get this done so give me Saquon side again how about Barkley and likely 1.5 tight end for Devonta Smith Ooh, okay this is a lot better uh this is this is definitely more difficult oh boy that's a trick I have damn I Ooh, I have Devonta. Devonta I have Devonta Smith two slots ahead in my dynasty startup rankings he's 40th overall I have Saquon at 42 I, I'm kind of tell you what my guts telling me I'm, I'm leaning Devonta Smith here. Yeah, and, and a, uh, FFD ADP they are one, two, three spots apart. So we're we're right in the ballpark. So you sprinkle a little likely on top. I know he's not the starter right now, but it is 1.5, and you got to be a little patient. I think likely can be a good starter. Got to get there. likely on your squad, uh, but do it. I think I lean Devonta in that one. How about last one, Jalen Wright and a first for Barkley and Kate Otten. No premium. Yeah, you. I don't even need um, Kate Otten in this, man. I'm still going to take... Still taking Barkley. Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I yep. agree. I agree. How about Rashi Rice, Saquon Barkley for Keon Coleman and Jonathan Taylor? Oh, okay. So... Uh, Rashi and Barkley, Keon Bar- and JT. <sighs> Probably got to go... Probably got to go Rashi Barkley here. I, uh, I'm, I'm significantly lower on... Keon Coleman then consensus yeah I do I do love Jonathan Taylor but man that I, I almost viewed it as like a really good two f- for a really good one and a very iffy another player so give, give me the two yeah I, I when I first initially wrote this down I was on the JT side but I, I, I like the Rice Barkley you know obviously a lot of this all depends on where your team is and that's part all, all of this but these are you know just some ideas of of kind of these are real life trades that I all those trades I just read to you have happened in the last five days um, and that's kind of what we're going to do throughout this show so let's keep it moving here let's go over to Mark Andrews so Mark Andrews uh, has missed some time over the last few seasons but went out there it has been a top three tight end if you're in tight end premium he's been awesome uh, there was arguments for him being tight end one there for a while still 28 years old I believe he turns 29 in the season a perennial favorite of Lamar's. Obviously, Zay factors in here, I think, moving forward. But really, there's not a whole lot of target competition out of those two anyway. We got year two of Monken's offense. I think this thing is expanding. September birthday. And, and evolving. So it feels like the market on Andrews has cooled a little bit. We got him at 5-4 tight end premium in the FFD ADP. Tight end six. Um, so kind of one of those last elite tight ends that you can grab in a startup. Austin, are you buying, selling, or holding? Obviously, again, comes down if you're a, a rebuilder, you're probably looking to sell the Mark Andrews side of things, but want to give you some real life value and then give you a chance to buy, sell, hold uh Mark Andrews, Austin. I think Mark Andrews is probably more of a hold than anything. And I say that because I think it's Due to the injuries, man. Right. You know, recency bias is a hell of a drug. Consensus is a little bit lower on him. And maybe rightfully so. You know, the production has been... I think Mark Andrews has been a little more frustrating than we would like him to be in, in recent memory. And I think, you know, he's... He's injury I don't prone. Want, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to call him a buy. I don't hate the idea of buying. I actually don't like the idea of, of selling Mark Andrews right now because I do feel like you're selling him low. Right. So I think he's more, more of a hold than anything. But if I if I had to pick another option, it would be it would definitely be a buy before selling him. So. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a hold if you're the rebuilder and want to sell. It's a buy mm-hmm. if you're the contender and you can get the value on him. 
Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, let's go. Andrews, tight end premium 1.5, a first, a 25 first, a 25 second. Oof. Is that is that first just random? Is yeah, it mid? A, it's a random. Yeah, we, random. Don't, we don't know. See, I think that's appropriate value. I think that's... Yeah, that's I a, think that's... that's a, if you're a contender, I don't mind it for, for what could be tight end one to tight end three production. And if you're a seller, I, you know, that would be... I'd be fine with that, right? I'll tell you what, I, I probably would buy for that. I, again, I know I said it about Saquon Barkley, but I will say the same thing about Mark Andrews. If you can get him for under two first, I'd probably be okay with it. Yeah. T. Higgins or Andrews at a 25 third, 1.5 tight end premium. T. T. or Andrews and a 25 third, 1.5 tight end premium. Hmm. They're both in tier six in my rankings. It's just T's at the very top of it, and Andrews is is quite literally at the bottom. That third's not going to be enough. Give, and I don't even care that it's tight end premiums. I'm, I'm still going to take T. Higgins. I think T. Higgins is going to be so pissed off this season. I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. I think he's going to do everything in his power to just receive you know, a gigantic extension wherever he goes. And I think I think T. Higgins is you know another player that, you know, recency bias, man. People are lower on him. I think T. Higgins is going to be a value this year. Go Tigers! Yeah, I, I think I, I think I lean tend to agree there. How about Hawkinson and a third or Mark Andrews? Uh, I think you might get a year younger on Hawk. Right now Hawk we got 26. we got Andrews at tight end six. We got Hawk at tight end seven. We got Andrews coming in at five oh four. We got Hawk coming in at five eleven. So they're they're adding the third to the Hawk side in this. Uh, trade that went down. I, I don't I don't mind it. I mean, Hawk was tight end one, obviously lost his Kirk. quarterback. So we don't really know what that's going to be. But I'll take the Hawk side on that one. You know, man, I'm looking at my rankings. I actually I have you mentioned you got Andrews at six and Hawk at seven. I have them reverse. So I have Hawk six, Andrews seven. They are 62nd and 63rd overall in my rankings. Yeah, give me the give me the hawk side, man. I'm I'm it's it's neck and neck. I'll take the third. Why not? And you get two years younger. I know he's coming off the in- injury, and yes, they do have a QB change. I'll still take the hawk side. I'm with you, Casey. What factors in well for for Hawk is that they they traded for him, and then they made an effort to make sure that he was pumped with targets. Uh, so I like that. How about uh, JSN and Jelani Woods or Mark Andrews, one point five ten in premium. Jelani okay. was the throw in to get the tight end here, I assume, but it's a nice throw in there. I like that. Good, good, good job on the on the trade there. Jelani could, you know, Colts are, like Colts are hyping him late. up once again. Right. Jelani Woods will never do anything, Casey. He, he, I, I'm so sick. I'm telling you, man, coming from a Colts fan, I am so sick of hearing Jelani Woods' name mm. every offseason. He literally comes out and drops like 300 receiving yards and 20 receptions. It's like he was hamstrung all last year. He's just he's not doing anything. I'm. I don't mean uh, Jelani. If you're listening, I apologize, he brother. For sure but uh, is. <laughs> yeah, he's got nothing else to do. So this is this is just basically JSN versus Mark Andrews, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. At least that's how I view it. I'm gonna take Mark Andrews here. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate that. I mean, if, if ADP if, has them a whole round apart, right? Startup, I, but that doesn't seem my initial take when I saw that was like, give me JSN. Yeah. If I was on the JSN side, like if, what would really be nice if I could get something like a likely back or obviously, right, not a Jelani, obviously, but a likely, obviously, might... obviously the Andrews likely thing probably isn't going to happen there because that person, but like even a JT Sanders, just somebody who's a shot in the dark a little later. A Musgrave, uh, who's it, who's, who's down there a little bit, Sinnott, Otten, you know, somebody a little bit more than Woods would really take me over the top here uh, with that trade. All right, how about Komet and a first or Mark Andrews, one point five tight end premium. On the surface, just listening to that, I, I don't even have to look at my rankings. I I think that I think I have to go first and Komet here. Mm-hmm. I like Cole Komet probably more than consensus. Same. 
Now I mean, I, to comply to the face form. Now I do have Komet as my, as my tight end eleven, whereas Mark Andrews is tight end seven, and and there is actually two tier gaps, but they got a big difference in age. Obviously, Cole Komet is twenty five. Uh, actually, it's not that big of a difference. Twenty five versus twenty eight. Like one year. Yeah, right. Years. Right. No. No. You're correct. I, I apologize. I thought that there was a larger gap. Uh, you don't have to apologize. But but it is There's nice getting a little bit younger. Year. That first is nice. And I, I know the situation definitely got murkier in Chicago for the pass catchers, right? Komet eight last year. I I expect him to still be productive and good this season. Just again, drink regression. I feel <laughs> like it is inevitable just due to the new supporting cast. Obviously, Roma yeah. Dunze, yeah. Keenan, you know, DJ Moore. So, uh, but yeah, man, I'll, I'll take the first and I'll take Cole Komet here. What what would you do, Casey? Yeah, Give I, me Mark. You know, I I think initial the initial thing was was Mark. I I think Komet has got like. Unfortunately, I think Komet will have a little bit of a down year and it'll look like a bad trade for this year. But I feel like this time next year, that trade could be looking pretty good for you because I think Komet will be eating once Keenan gets out of there. Once they, well, you know, once they lose something on that offense, which is most likely Keenan Allen there. So I, I think I think I lean to the Mark side, but I, 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 hmm. yeah. I mean, if you're not ready you get, to win, you're getting four it's years younger at a, there, at a you first. Know? I, yeah. I don't, I don't hate it. It's right. not unfair trade. Right. Right. All right, let's, Mark's gonna have a better year. Yeah, let's let's keep it moving. Let's go Mixon, another uh, new phone. Who dis? Mixon's over there in uh, Houston. So another guy who leaves. You know, a little bit different than Barkley because the Bengals have been good and a good offense, but at least goes to an equal two offense there for Joe Mixon. Wanted to throw somebody out who wasn't quite as highly ranked, but is intriguing because I think really could help somebody win a championship this year. I feel like Mixon's going to go out there and, and, and put on with, with Houston. Uh, so what are your thoughts on Joe Mixon? Obviously, you're selling if you're the rebuilder and you're buying potentially if you're the contender. Let's just say you're the contender. Is Mixon somebody that you're looking to buy? To tell you the truth, man, no. I'm, I, I don't want any part of Joe Mixon. I know everything looks amazing right now on paper it looks phenomenal i do not expect everything to pan out how we want it to right you could say the same thing about the new york jets the uh, atlanta falcons and i kind of think uh houston's gonna be interesting while i still think they're gonna probably win the afc south uh i just i think they have a lot of moving parts a lot of mouths to feed and i think their offense while it's still gonna be productive i do believe that we will see a lot of frustration because some weeks like we don't know who it will be. Now, Joe Mixon, he ranked third in opportunity share last season. You love to see it. Oh, 79%, like extremely strong number right there. Volume was phenomenal. But he was 36th in yards per touch at 4.6 and 40th in true yards per carry. So you could say the same thing about Najee, who we love. You could say the same thing about Rashad White, who I think we both love as well, right? Players who received an abundance of volume but they were inefficient, right? At the end of the day, we don't care, right? We, we don't care. As long as the production and fantasy points are there, Casey, I'm, I'm not going to be mad about you being inefficient. You know, you got the job done. You still put up the points. You still help me win. Uh, but I just, I wanted to rattle off those numbers about Joe Mixon. Um, and the final thing I'll say just before, you know, we start going back and forth on value is he did sign a three-year, $25.5 million contract with the Texans. So, that is very appealing in itself. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I thought when I looked at these trades, I thought Mixon had like a, a bit stronger of a market than I than I thought. And, you know, obviously there's bad trades on here because bad trades happens all the time. And next year, some of the bad trades I thought were bad trades weren't bad trades. Oh, let me get in that league. Uh, but I'm torn on Mixon, which is why I thought this was interesting. 25 first or Mixon? Give me the 2025 first. I'm, I'm very confident in that. 204 this year, super flex Mixon. Is Penix still there? <laughs> well, that's interesting because that's the next question. 204 or Mixon. I think um, I'll take Mixon there so if I'm a contender. We're sure. looking like if I maybe around that maybe, Penix is there. If Trey Benson's hanging around, maybe maybe I don't make that trade. I don't think he's hanging around now. He he's just escalated up. So yeah. you can forget Benson and Brooks. You're looking mm. at you know one of those wide receivers, Lad, Ricky. Yeah. Well, not give Lad. me give me. Give me 204, man. I would I would rather Pierce all. Uh, I'd even take the dart throw on Leggett. Uh, hell, I'll go as far as I will go as far as Jalen Polk. I would rather Jalen Polk over Joe Mixon. Give me Mixon unless Penix is there. How about Mixon or Penix? P- 
Penix. Superflex, obviously. It, Superflex. I mean, y- you have to go Michael Penix. They're actually you so close in. You have to get my... Michael Penix on your team. It's too easy. They're... You have to do it. Just sit and wait a minute. You got to do it. It's like, it's uh, yeah. winners. We got winners. <laughs> winners, 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 winners. Boy, Stu, we're going to take a shit in your bookmaker face. <laughs> No, I, I have them both in tier eight, but I have Penix ahead of, of Mixon. And to tell you the truth, it kind of freaks me out that they're even that close in my rankings, but it, it has to be Penix, especially in Superflex, you know? Always Penix. Debo or Mixon? Oh, man, Debo, 100%. Mixon. Addison or Mixon? Wait, wait, wait. I, I want to say something real quick about Debo, and I'm not, like, the most bullish on Debo by any means, but... I pulled up the stat yesterday. Debo was the wide receiver three overall during the final 10 games last year. Debo, so he, Debo slayed it last year. Like He had 19.1 points per game the final 10 weeks. I, I just want to say like that flew under the radar. And, and Debo was low-key a league winner. And, and I didn't even realize it, man. It's like yeah. you look back at some of the stats, some of the game logs. It's like Debo was... Debo was really like that. So, yeah, Debo 100% over Joe Mixon for me. Yeah. Addison or Mixon, I think that's pretty easy, Addison. Addison. But mm-hmm. Basically, I put some of these on here because it just was like a trade market was a little better than I thought it was on, on Mixon. So that was interesting to me a little bit. Um, a first, Addison, Debo, Pennant. Like, it was some 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 decent move. JSN or Mixon. Like, I'm taking JSN. Yeah, but yeah like, easy. And that's probably a bad trade, but, like, it's out there. Um, I'd add it, too. Mixon, Jaden Reed. Um, I, I give me Jaden Jade Reed, Reed, man. Before, I, but Jaden Reed. All right, last one. Mixon or Javante? I have them neck and neck. Javante, who I am, I'm really low on. He's my running back, 24. He might not make the roster. Shout out to uh, that sicko, whoever wrote that report. But uh, J- Javante is my running back, 24. I have Mixon at 25. So I guess I'll just hit the reroll button. And while I do think Javante is going to be you know, not as productive this season. I'll just, I'll, I, I, I dude, it's, Mixon, they're man. neck and neck. They're neck and neck. I might just take mix and actually I'm looking at my rankings right now and it tell you the truth. It doesn't even feel right. I think I would go mix and I'm with you, Jason. Yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving. Let's go DK Metcalf here it's because offense, you know, because I think DK was, was the opposite of Mixon. light, a mar- light, little bit lighter market than I expected. DK comes in for us at ADP. 506 so still pretty decent and dk i feel like gets a little i think he's probably underrated at this point right i feel like he's people he's think he's peaked already pushed down a little bit 26 but has he you peaked know, big bodied and and i like i said i was talking about jsn in the last pod I, I like the offense i like the situation i like the the oc that's coming in and and, and how they're going to switch things up I think Gino's more than capable. He needs to bring me that pacifier mouth guard. <laughs> sure. We, well, that's the only that's the problem with DK is there's a little bit of shithadism there every <laughs> once in a while. But are you buying, selling, or holding uh, DK, Austin? Yeah, he's more of a buy than anything, in my opinion, man. I think Mike McDonald, I think Ryan Grubb, they're going to run a more up-tempo offense in Seattle this season, right? A lot of just change in scenery. It's going to look very different different that Seattle offense and uh, yes I'm in on JSN Tyler Lockett obviously very solid player who is declining you know you know for a fact DK Metcalf is still the wide receiver one on that offense I think JSN can get close to him but it's it's still DK man I think DK yeah. is more of a buy than anything though did he ever put on any body weight like <laughs> percentage fat I have no idea uh, it, was death, it was like deathly slow yeah you got to put well, some fat on. Well, I'm going to run through some of these trades in these like DK Metcalf or Chris Godwin, 25-2, 25-3. You're getting mm. Godwin with the two and the three? Yeah. Give me DK. Yep. I, I, I was afraid you were going to say a first, and I think that would have been enough for me to to lean Godwin's side, but th- I'm, I'm going to take DK here, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, Godwin has like three consecutive seasons with a thousand oh, God, yards. Godwin's he's, great. He's I'm, a not, good I'm, player. Not, I'm not hating on Godwin at all. But like, I, I'll just I'll take DK. Like, yep. And I, Godwin's a big buy for me. Like, I'm buying Godwin. Yeah, he's another buy a contender. But bye bye. Jamison Williams, Terry McLaurin, DK Metcalf. It's DK. DK. Like, look, Terry yeah. could come out here and slay it. And, and if you're a contender, I, I guess I don't really hate that. But ah. declining asset there in Terry a little bit if if you're counting assets. But I want to buy Jamison, but not with DK. Right. What do you What do you think there, Austin? 
Yeah, man, I, I'm just like sad looking at my rankings. I'm like, I, I got to get more bullish on Terry because all he does is produce, man. And yeah. uh, she needs you, Kobe Myers, still, out there in the second half. Yeah, he's got Jaden Daniels. Dogs are gonna Jane go Daniels, into the Bourbon Bowl. Jane Daniels can throw a good deep ball. Give me, give me DK though, and it's because I don't like Jamison Williams enough on top of, you know, Terry to get this done. If it, if it was a better asset, I think it would be a lot closer for me. Yeah, I mean Terry's going to be twenty nine going into the season, so he's basically a hundred. When is yeah. DK he's turning? I think he's 20. twenty. I think he's twenty six. He's twenty six. When's he turning twenty seven? Though he's already twenty six. I, I feel like he's in December or January, but I don't know. If you, um, you, you, why would you know that off the top of your head, bro? Josh Josh Downs, Yo, December fourteenth. What a psychopath! <laughs> <laughs> Josh Downs or AD and AD Mitchell or DK, DK. Metcalf, right? Silly DK 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 two three Next. or DK DK. Let me get in that league. DK. Yeah, I mean, and you know, obviously, you, you know, you know, two you three Superflex is Phoenix there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you still got to take DK, but I mean, man, you got to get Penix on your team. What are you doing if you if you're not taking Penix super on your flex, team? Superflex messing up. Superflex one oh nine or DK. No, that doesn't make. That's a bad trade. That's there's way more going on in there than I expected. DK Metcalf, Alvin Kamara, or Jordan Addison. DK and Kamara. Right. It's just like it's silly. The market seems very soft on DK. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, is I, I'd probably be going out and trying to send some offers for DK Metcalf because it seems like an Wait. awfully soft market. Moves to make. That, right Casey, now. that's that's crazy to me because I think that uh, Kamara should be on the other side of the deal. I right. think Kamara should be with Jordan Jeez. Addison, and then yeah, wow. I'm yeah, just I'm probably sure. Left. Hang on, dude. I'm gonna hop off the podcast real quick and go uh, send a trade offer out for every DK Metcalf manager because I could take, I could take Kamara and Addison maybe for Metcalf. Yeah, that's a lot closer though. I'm certainly not giving you Metcalf and Kamara for Addison. Right. All right. Well, I just wanted to hit hit a couple. It just it it took me aback by how soft that a you lot were of these taken aback. You, I can usually sift through here and find some some trades that are like oh yeah these these are these are these are decent but like there's not a whole lot of real great strong trades over the last seven days for for dk metcalf i mean i mean here's here's dk metcalf or uh, gasecki and a third or devonta smith i could go to devonta right i i I could go up to devonta most Um, of the time i want the best player in the trade right it's rare that i'm trying to Back off the best player in the trade. Unless right. it's just too good to pass up. Like here, DK, DK, Kincaid, half PPR. Oh, DK or Kincaid? Right. Half PPR? Ugh. Yeah. Get out of that league. I guess I'll take DK. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go DK. All right. Anyway, we can keep it moving here, but I just I went through there and I was like, oh, DK gets hit. Let's let's see what the market is on him. And and so so he made the list. Let's we'll throw one more out there. We'll go Jamison Williams, because he's getting a little uh love right now. Been kind of building all off season. There's been they've been sprinkling little morsels out there. Old Dan Campbell, which we kind of gambling talked, issues. We talked about it at the end of last year, how we saw the him doing the little things a lot better, which is going to fare Running very down, well for him in a Dan down Campbell field and block and finally getting some snaps esque offense. And now Josh Reynolds out of there. We do have DPJ in there, but in all intents and purposes, Jamison Williams is going to be the two can get the top off that defense for him. Uh, he can do a lot of different things. We saw him in the playoff game. Just take the jet sweep to the house electric player. Um, and if he keeps doing what he's been doing and working like he's been working, He'll he really be in, opens up the offense. He'll be in good graces with uh, with Dan Campbell there. So, Jamison Williams buy sell hold Austin. I think Jamison Williams is is a screaming sell. Okay. Uh, I've always been out on him. Really, ever since. You're gonna eat I, I, sorry, Such sorry, sorry. Let me take a step back. I can't say that I've always been out on Jamison Williams. I've been out on Jamison Williams for a while. So. Since like somebody was about to pull up a receipt and go, no, yep, yep, nope. <laughs> no, nobody remembers anything. That's no. why this all works. Yeah, I've, I've, I've tweeted true. some dumb stuff in the past. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you could pull some receipts. But when, when since, were you in on Jameson? Since 2000, there have been 17 wide receivers drafted in the first round who have failed to hit 250 receiving yards. Two of those 17 wide receivers would go on to have a single 1,000 yard receiving season. 
Uh, only three out of 17 had even an 800 yard season. Uh, and only one of those 17 had 5,000 plus career receiving yards. That's, well, you're about to, on, you're about to get another one. Season? You're about to get another one. That's based on the correct. first season? Correct. He was I think, uh, correct. He missed his, count. you know. What about, he, he you got to take his second season into account then. Which was brutal. Still would have. Uh, ah, he was suspended. Right. Devastating to my case. He was suspended and yeah. hurt. <laughs> Double I, I, whammy. You know, but in terms of like evaluating young players, I really believe that one, one of the most accurate indicators, one of the best metrics is just looking at the production that they had their rookie season. I'm telling you, if you ever just take the time and look at how they did during their rookie campaign, yeah, I mean, it, it is very, sure. very accurate. It's yeah. scary how he, accurate this it is. is a, he's an outlier for that. There's, there's been a weird start to his career. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, while I can get behind that, there's in some regards, like right. there's also Nico Collins of the world who, you know, take yeah, three t- years. Th- what happened to the three year like, I don't, I don't, wide receiver? I think Devontae Adams has been one of the best receivers in the league and he didn't break out for, you know, it, it, so it happens. Um, right. But, and uh, you know, if I put my mind to it's, it, I could find more. And it's but. not a perfect science it's just no i mean his, history hasn't been kind to players in that bucket is really play all the percentages but i'm i, I, I gotta take liar i gotta take williams out of that bucket just because yep. because of the way things transpired and the way it played out all right so let's wrap like this it. podcast up with this steven ramondre stevenson or jameson williams in a second oh uh yeah ramondre give me absolutely give me ramondre I stevenson feel like you're gonna be I, on the other side I, of every I, single one of these I, i'm just i also i love ramondre man he's, he's my number one running back by this offseason uh, well i can't disagree with that one really too much i i, I do like stevenson a, a good bit and i liked him a lot last year uh two six or jmo two six super flex uh two six probably going to be right around that jalen polk xavier Leggett range yeah let, let me hit let me hit that re-roll button. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't. I can't be too mad at that one. Zamir White or Jamison Williams? Dude, I hate both players. Can <laughs> I just <laughs> probably could get a little Can spike I, in value? I mean, you could get a spike in value from either of these yeah, guys, but probably yeah. people want to be in on Zamir, so that's probably the right I, way to go. People but hate JMO. They nobody like. They hate him. Can I take? I'll take Zemir JMO White. just because I feel like it's going to be a longer term situation. Yeah. I was going to say, man, I might take Zamir White, try to flip him after like two or three good weeks to start the that year. That was my big code uh, thought. But if, yep. if, I, if I can't do that, I would probably just take Jamison Williams here. I, I would rather Jamo. But, I mean, shit, you might flip Jamo after three weeks of the season because he's cause it just fair. takes one play. Bullying. It just takes one. Mm. Mm. One day and your play is made. Marshawn Lloyd and a 25 fourth or Jamison Williams? Uh, Lloyd can't even walk, man. His hip is messed up so he can't uh he'll never have success in the nfl right that's how that works oh this is close oh, this is really close i think i want to go jameson williams here to be honest with you man i'd probably go jmo give me jmo all right we can do casey am i am i crazy no i, I mean I'm, I'm probably going jmo there too i really like lloyd oh, he's, he's fine let's yeah see, let's see the adp difference here lloyd coming in at twelve oh six, Jameson's got to be earlier than that. Nine some. Ten oh eight. Maybe I got old ADP. No, you're right. Ten oh eight. So I'll take Jamo there. I think I, I, I have Jamo one thirtieth in my rankings, and Marshawn Lloyd is one fortieth. They're in the same tier. All right, last one: Christian Watson, Jameson Williams, classic. <laughs> Spider Man meme where both players are just pointing right at each other, right? Yeah. Um, People want to be in on Christian Watson. You probably got to take Christian Watson. I don't want to. I'd rather have. Yeah. Him, but you should give me, give me Christian value. Watson. Christian Watson. Give me Christian Watson. Yeah. It's close. It's close. I'm going rogue. I'm going JMO. Fuck it. <laughs> We're going out. I'm going out like that. I mean, I, I don't. I don't hate it. I think it's a pretty, pretty interesting swap. And Spider-Man meme was a good. That good was way a good to point pull. That out. Um, where's uh? Where's he in the ADP? Christian Watson. Yeah. Uh, he's been going earlier well, and is. earlier. Ten eleven. So right Dude, there with Jamie. Yeah, they're they 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 they're, they're going back to back. Then then you usually have to decide whether you want AD Mitchell or uh like a Leggett in a startup or or those guys. So Dude, I liked Watson going into last year and then consensus just jacked his ADP up to like in redraft, I think he was going round 4, round 5 and I'm like it's just too rich for me, man. So I, I had no shares of him last year because his value was just so inflated. But yeah, maybe it's maybe it's kind of working its way back this year. Yeah, I'm going JMO 
because uh, of a less crowded situation. Of I just got to stand by my initial take of, <laughs> of him coming out of take college. Lock. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this one up. We got Austin Abbott. Go follow him on the Twitters at Austin Abbott. FF. Two B's, two T's, two F's. Please um, say the F. You can come check us at the FF Dynasty. Uh, we got extra episodes on the Patreon side of things. Three of those at least a month. You can go check that out on patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty. The ADP we've been showing we, you. We got ADP. We got drafts. Uh, we're we're going to be do. We got uh, Dynasty rankings that I just about updated all of them um real real close so about to drop i don't believe it about to drop those i need to just, see it just working on the running backs. these kids out there are like these guys with their rankings get these out guys, of here the, the running backs get a little dicey but yeah you can uh, be sure to like subscribe comment below five hit star that review five star review just go down hit the review and tap them five stars let's get don't it. give me four don't even do it if you're gonna do four <laughs> you don't have to write anything either i'm giving you four because yeah, I don't care about your write up, you know, <laughs> unless it's nice. You know, I love a, I love the love, man. But the shade, I, you know, it doesn't phase me. So yeah. you're not getting what you think you're getting out of it. Yeah. You're just helping the algorithm. Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Let's we'll catch you F next time. F out of here. Well, Peace. Austin, it'll be a minute. Love you. Peace. Peace. Switching.